and welcome to the Relationship Smart Women podcast. This is a podcast to help us explore how to be smarter in our relationships, how to be more aware, more reflective, clearer on our worth, and feel more like our true selves in these intimate, tricky bonds that we call relationships. I'm your host, Nicole Matheson, and my book, The Beauty Load, will be out from the 20th of May, 2022, and you'll be able to get that from any bookstore. If you enjoy this podcast, I would appreciate it so much if you could leave a review and subscribe and share it with a friend if you think it would benefit them. But for now, let's get started on today's episode. Hello, welcome to another episode. Today, I want to talk about why your husband or male partner may not understand your experience of the beauty load. I mean... I don't know about you, but I've felt the judgment of the men in my life uh, around the amount of clothes and the variety of clothes that I have needed compared to his, uh, you know, jeans and t-shirt and work shirt and pants and two or three pairs of shoes Um, around, I suppose, the expenditure, the time, the worry, you know, it really is different for our men folk. And of course it is, you know, because our culture has... (laughs) has conditioned us all, has brainwashed us all to see um, men and women through different lenses when it comes to the way we look. Um, I do think men are under a lot more pressure and boys these days than they ever were. And I do think it is so personal because I think the way we feel the beauty load has a lot to do with our own personal experiences, our traumas, the messages we got, the the carers that we had and how they felt it or, you know, communicated to us about it. So it's very hard to generalize, but, you know, we're going to do a little bit of generalizing today about the difference and I think one thing that really demonstrates this difference is an experiment that was done by Carl Stefanovic in 2015 here in Australia so Carl's a bit of a you know a figure an Australian celebrity He's the, he was or is, I'm not even sure if he still is, a morning TV presenter on the Today Show in Australia. So a lot of Australians wake up with Carl. And for many, many years, his co-host, Lisa Wilkinson. So back in 2015, it was Carl and Lisa. And he did an experiment whereby he decided that for a whole year, he would not change his outfit so he'd show up on the today show every single morning in exactly the same suit the same tie the same blue shirt was it a tie i'm not even sure if there was a tie but it was the same outfit every single day for a year he wanted to see if anyone noticed because he realized that His co-host, Lisa, was getting a lot of uh, feedback, unsolicited feedback about her outfit Um, choices, about her looks, about, you know, how she showed up, how she how she was on uh, in appearance. So he thought, okay, let's see what happens if I do not change and not a single audience 
member noticed well at least they didn't get in touch they didn't complain they didn't contact the tv show the producers anything like that whereas lisa wilkinson whose outfits changed and varied as normal received regular on unsolicited fashion advice appraisals um, and negative feedback such as this one today's outfit is particularly jarring and awful get some style so these comments were coming from the public to lisa while carl's sitting there in the same blue suit day in day out if this does not show us that the expectations for men and women still to this day in Australia I am also suggesting across the western world if not many more parts of the world are very different Lisa was being judged mostly getting negative feedback while the man sitting next to her did not put any effort in to changing his outfit and did not get any comments can you imagine if a woman wore the same outfit once i mean it would get comment but every day for a year can you imagine if a woman did that i mean there would be uproar people would be jarred and so uncomfortable with the lack of effort with the the you know just isn't that i don't know it would have it would have dirty implications it would have lazy implications it would have giving up implications it would have breaking against the cultural and societal norms that the rest of us have to agree with and adhere to so it would have well fuck you implications we'd be cranky with her we would not be happy about it but i just think it's interesting when we bring it back to the level of relationship or family and you notice that your male partner or the male people in your life don't really get it or don't get the stress or the anxiety or the importance that getting ready or an outfit or appearance or aging or <clears throat> putting on weight all of that stuff they might not get it and that makes sense because the societal and cultural pressure is just not the same it's not the same you know we saw it here in australia as well when um julia gillard was prime minister never before had people really commented on appearance of our leaders and then the minute we get a woman as a leader she was getting constant negative feedback about her outfits in the paper in the media um along with all the other places and i think it's really harsh it's really unfair it's just not an area that men are getting judged on but also shamed on and that shame does hit us where it hurts like it just seems to appearance this is what i noticed when writing the beauty load is that our appearance seems to in women be connected to our sense of self-worth whereas in men it doesn't seem to have that same connection point they are a little protected from it being personal from it being about their character or about their worth their value in the world whereas for us 
it tends to oof, make us feel small. And when you have women rising to positions of celebrity or power, it can be used against us. So what do you do when there are people in your life who don't get it? And it could be other women as well, let's face it. We all feel it a little bit differently. I think actually the best thing we can do is be honest and say, look, I get that you might not feel the beauty load in the same way that I do. And I get that it doesn't feel like a big deal for you. But I have been conditioned and brainwashed from a very young age to believe that this is really important and it stresses me out. And so for now, I need to do this to feel comfortable. And obviously, we also want to do our own growth and transformational work. We don't want to use that as an opt out of doing any of that. But I think we've got to do what we can to look after ourselves. And if that is doing what we can on the surface initially, while we do the scaffolding, I love the word scaffolding, of that deeper foundational work, then so be it. I think it's an invitation to a deeper discussion with your male partners or, you know, uh, flatmates or family members or friends. You could ask them, you know, how does the beauty load affect you? When do you notice it? Do you think it's different for men and for women? And how? And how do you think that would feel if um, you've always been judged or valued or commented on or brainwashed (laughs) to be beautiful in order to have value? Anyway, my dears, I would be really interested to hear if you feel this chasm, the beauty load gap between men and women with your partner and how you manage it. I think it is a real thing. This this story I told you about Carl Stefanovic was 2015. Not much has changed since then. It is very much alive and kicking in our world. So we're all going to have to deal with this. We're going to have to deal with this in heterosexual relationships and we're going to have to deal with this in workplaces and in families. And so I'd love to hear how you are dealing with it and how you own it, you know, and how we don't make it make us feel ashamed because this is not personal, this is not our fault, this is the result of where patriarchy and consumerism meet. And we just have to do what we can to feel okay, and to grow, and to evolve. Yes, all the best with that, my dears. Um, My book, The Beauty Load, is available for pre-order now. It is the beginning of May right now and will be in your hot little hands on the 20th of May. So you can go to Booktopia, Amazon, Book Depository and order it now if you would like. You can go to my website, go to nicolematheson.com forward slash the beauty load and order a copy. And if you order it before May the 20th, I've got a bunch of a bundle of really cool bonuses for you to record audio recordings one's a meditation you're gonna love and a worksheet for you as well as a guided workshop with me so go grab your your book now and go and register for the bundle i look forward to hearing from you take care bye